there are limits to all the freedoms in the Bill of Rights. Uh, there's limits to free speech. Uh, there's the famous statement by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes when he said that uh, you can't shout fire in a crowded theater. It causes people to panic. That's not free speech. Uh, we have that same kind of concern uh, with child pornography, which is uh, shouting uh, fire in a crowded theater because it puts others in danger. And uh, there are two types of pornography that are clearly not covered under the First Amendment. One is obscenity and one is child pornography. And the courts have looked at both of those and said there's a certain point at which things are so obscene they're not protected by the First Amendment. It's generally defined by a community standard set forth in a Supreme Court case and uh, child porno which is, of course, one of the most heinous things on the planet. It's not, uh, it's not considered free speech. Well, uh, in 2004, a fellow named Michael Williams, uh, he was caught red-handed by federal agents with child porno, and we weren't even talking about his daughter, and uh, there were a number of pictures and depictions that they found, they found uh, in his possession. He was subsequently prosecuted under the PROTECT Act, which was passed by Congress in 2003, uh, to prohibit the solicitation, distribution of child pornography, to even reasonably, you know, to, to pander it and put out the belief that you had child pornography. And uh, uh, the court, uh, the Eleventh Circuit Court of Appeals posed a hypothetical. They said people could just be joking about an R gang with the uh, little rascals uh, in it and be joking that it was child porno and they could be convicted under the act. Well, first of all, that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and, and arguments I've heard su subsequently that if you take, parents that just instantly take a child, picture their child in the bathtub and the child's semi-nude, that could fall in this act. No judge would even consider that and no prosecutor would do that. I mean, it'd be thrown out. So now the Supreme Court's looking at this particular case on appeal. And um, I think this gives the Supreme Court an opportunity to do two things. One, protect our children. Second is apply some, apply some common sense uh, logic to the First Amendment. Child porno is not covered under the First Amendment. Uh, anybody that's pandering, causing the, the people to believe they have porno should obviously be investigated. And I believe it falls under this act, and this act's constitutional. This is definitely not free speech. The point here is that Congress carefully considered this subject when they passed the PROTECT Act in 2003. They wanted to stop child pornographers, and that was for a very clear reason, not just because they didn't like it. Uh, they asked a fellow named Michael Heimbeck, who is a, uh, deals with child porno with the FBI, they called him in to testify, and he said some interesting things. When he asked whether was there a connection between child porno and people who molested children, he resoundingly said yes. This is what he said. He said, my answer is resounding, alarming, yes. He went on to explain, and this is what he says. The volume of child pornography circulated on the internet is staggering, and the number of persons obtaining, trading, and distributing these images is downright appalling. So there's, and it's been shown in a number of studies, people that solicit, show, show child porno, uh, have a tendency to molest children. That's why this is so darn important. I'm a staunch believer in the First Amendment, but somewhere we got to draw the line. We draw the line where our children uh, and their safety, when that's at stake. And that's what this case is all about. Uh, the Supreme Court should uphold this law, and what we need to do is we need to prosecute these child porno dealers, distributors, and people who claim they have child porno, if in fact they do, and put them behind bars where they belong.